And welcome back. We just recapped the 2K. Of course, if you missed it, Optic Gaming in the finals against Prophecy. Prophecy with uh, Embos and Ricky teaming mm -hmm. with Clayster and Parasite on Saturday. Yeah, uh, looked like a very good team. Team that I think that can definitely compete if they stay together. But then on Sunday, we saw the rosters change a little bit. Yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, on Saturday, we made the mention. If you see a Saturday lineup repeat on Sunday, there's a good possibility it could actually happen. But here's a look at what our Sunday teams looked like. Few changes amongst the teams that uh, struggled on Saturday, or at least uh, didn't make it to the finals, yeah. including a team that actually made it to the finals. You can see in the 5K, uh, we had Fizzerp, Neslo, Dito playing with Killa. A little bit of a changeup, not playing with John after a round one exit on Saturday. You fully would expect him to make a change after a round one exit. Uh, you don't know if that's a permanent home, but Killa is a free agent, kind of on his own a little bit. Doesn't want to play with Steady. Seems like Miracle's kind of exploring other options outside of playing with Killa. So uh, that is a definitely, a, that could be potentially be a home for Killa because he wanted a team with Nezla a little bit towards the end of Ghost. And yep. then obviously him and Fizz have been playing together forever. So makes a bit of sense. Uh, Stunner on Saturday played and made it to the top eight. Unfortunately, they were knocked out by Denial. But on Saturday, they were playing with um, Perplexed instead of Spacely. So they made a, a bit of a team change here. We'll talk about the results in a little bit. And the other squads to look at are Phase Red first. We'll talk about Sensor and Apathy. They were playing with Fears and Legal on Saturday. Knocked out round of 16. So Sunday, they switch it up, picking up Study, who is kind of alone on Elevate. Mm -hmm. All of his teammates trying places elsewhere. And Moach from Justice, who is also kind of in a similar situation. Right. I can totally see them sticking with Moach and then you know, exploring what's going to go on with that fourth uh, study. There's been some stuff that's come out of Elevate saying, you know, he's not that dedicated, not really focused on, you know, the game, the league right now. So I think people are going to want to see more from him before they commit. And then I think the Prophecy roster yesterday, it's Ricky, Clay, Bose, and Miracles. This is where we saw the biggest change, right? You know, Miracles switched out for Parasite, you know, a little swap of places. Yeah, so if you look at the Saturday rosters, uh, Parasite was with Prof, Miracles with that phase black lineup. Not a big move. Uh, but pretty interesting result. We had Parasite make it to the finals in back-to-back -back days with two different teams. Here you can see the comparison from Phase uh, to Phase Black. Enable, Slasher, and Aches both times. Easy swap there. And I'm told right now we actually have Parasite on the line. So let's bring him onto the show, Matt, and talk about his recent success. Chris, you there? Yeah, what's up, guys? How you doing, brother? What's, How you let's, doing? Let's break it down, Chris. You 2K it. You're playing with this Prophecy lineup. First off, can you talk about the drama that went down last week? We saw a very successful performance in the Pro League, yet it didn't seem you were happy with the teammates, Ricky, uh, Legal, and Fears, and you guys kind of made a change coming into Saturday with a, a new lineup for the 2K. Well, yeah, so uh, basically what happened was coming from Orlando, I was like, well, I pretty much was full disclosure with my teammates. I was like, for champs, I'm probably going to try to find somebody or a different team, if not like a mixture of team, like probably a team with Ricky and other two, or find a completely different team depending on uh, what I feel like. So um, after you know going on a win streak in the league, I mean, I just I, I didn't really like care much for it. it didn't really impact mm -hmm. my decision because what I the way I saw it was like even if I was gonna try to join a different team or try to be traded elsewhere, I wanted to leave Prof in a really good position so that at least they have like options because. I mean, like, no offense to anyone on the Prof roster, but not a lot of, like, uh, owners or organizations or teams are going to trade for legal and fears. So it puts me in a tough positions where right. I can't really get players to Prof or replace players on there. It puts me more in a position where, like, I kind of have to leave if I want options because no one's going to trade for those players. So uh, after... After league matches one day, I pretty much said that I had an offer and I was going to be traded. Um, at the time, it was for Envy. Uh, it was before Zdenao uh, and Zuma and Saints uh, actually wanted to join. So it was going to be, I think, like me, Mir, Merc, and Nameless, I think. So okay. I, yeah, I, I heard about that. that. I wanted to be traded. And as soon as I said they wanted to be traded, they just said, hell no. Like, <laughs> they just didn't even care. Like, it, it wasn't even because... They didn't think they would get value out of me. It was more or less because they just didn't want me to leave. And I think, like, I like Ricky as a person and as a player, but I think he was just kind of being spiteful because I didn't want to team with him. So he just said, screw it. Because think about it this way. I asked to be traded for Clay, and now they're playing with Clay. So why didn't they make that trade? It had, it, I don't think it had anything to do with who they were going to play. or I just think they just didn't want me off the roster for, right. you know. I mean, 
are personal happy, reasons, which kind of sucks. Are but. you happy that trade didn't go through, or are you kind of wishing you ended up on MB? Well, and I don't really care, to be honest. I, I, want, I, I had options, and I know that, like, whatever team I join, in my opinion, I'm going to do my best to make it successful. I just didn't want to be on that same roster. So it, it didn't really matter to me. It just it, one of the options um, had to come through, and I would have been happy. But um, with this phase roster, I'm not on it. I'm not on a team officially for champs, mm -hmm. so um, it really doesn't like uh, affect me too much. But I want to team with this phase team. It's really up to whether they want me or not. But I think I put on a pretty good impression yesterday with my performance in the 5K, and then last week in the 2K. Uh, they told me they wanted to play with Mir, so um, I played right. with Prof for the 2K, and then we switched out. So let's look at these two rosters, yeah. and, and let's kind of talk about the, the difference between the two, because I was really impressed. I kept saying it over and over again, I hope this Prof squad stays together after watching you guys in the 2K, uh, because you were so successful, and I, and I really looked at it as, okay, this is one of the teams that actually could take out mm -hmm. Optic Gaming for that $400,000, but... You had similar success with the phase squad playing with Aix, Slasher, and Enable. Well, what was it like playing with the two teams? How did they compare in your eyes? Because you made it to the finals in both situations. Okay, so with uh, the prof team that I was playing with, I kind of felt like we would obviously lack in like hard point and slaying power. So going into like series versus the really good teams, I didn't really expect to win those. I just kind of expected, hey, we're going to play Surge. We're probably going to win that. Just rely on Surge, take one respawn, we're going to win. Uh, with the other team, uh, what is it called? Phase, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I saw it both ways. I thought we were going to be a really good overall team, and I think we proved to do that. Uh, so it was our first time playing S&D there because, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've never teamed with any of those players ever in my life on that team, ever. But with Ricky and Bose and Clay, I've teamed with all of them before. So when playing Search or playing other game modes, I still had an idea of, like, what to do, and we kind of had general, like, uh, setups and... You know, we had the same idea of how to play, so it was a lot smoother playing with them. But with playing with the phase roster, I had a lot of adjusting to do. Uh, I kind of just had to straight use SMG, which I really like. I couldn't use a bow and like CTF and uplink because uh, Slasher and Aches and Enable, kind of, they all switch around there. So I just had to make sure that I stayed sub uh, okay. the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then Search and Destroy, it was like very difficult, even though we per performed pretty decently, like in Search and Destroy, we won most of them, if not like. I think we lost one to Optic, obviously, in the finals. But, I mean, for a pickup team, I think we did really well. And we brought a lot of our matches, like, you know, within the wire. So, I mean, if I think if our team got practice and kind of got setups and just we haven't, like, we got on the same page, I think that team would be really well because in the slaying department, um, we have a, a crap ton of, like, kills. And uh, we have yeah. really good KDs. And, like, we our team is very aggressive. I mean, obviously, Aches, very aggressive player. Enable... I think he's like the most efficient player in the league or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then Slasher, he kind of plays more of the laid back, kind of like nuisance that he, he uses the bow. And then I, I'm really aggressive as well. So, so I mean, Chris, if we, Sorry, ahead. Chris, but the one thing that I was going to say is that a lot of people, you and, they would worry about you and Aches going into that team together, right? I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily too much of a worry. I feel like you kind of trust him a little bit as a player and, you know, the success that he's had how would that dynamic work you think would you guys kind of bounce ideas off each other and would it work or would you kind of you know, step back in the leadership position a little bit yeah that, that's the way i see it because like the only time i really clash with players is when i feel like they don't know as much i know that might kind of sound egotistical but i mean it's just it's just no, I who it. i am but if i'm playing with an experienced player and a very talented player in like aches I'm not going to argue or really try to contest his ideas. I more or less try to like question them. So I see where he's coming from and I'm going to balance ideas off him, but I'm not going to sit there and say, no, you're, you're wrong. Like <laughs> he's obviously not wrong. I mean, he's won a lot, so I can't really like argue with him about that <laughs> yeah. type, of, type of stuff. You know what I mean? So this is the preferred team playing with the, the lineup that you had on Sunday. Um, you prefer to play, it was, of course, Aix, Enable, Slasher. This is the dream spot. But looking at the Season 1 situation, Prophecy would be a much easier change. Embos is already on the lineup. The only thing you would need to trade for is someone for Clayster. Um, 
would you be happy going into COD Champs with the backup squad? Or how, oh, yeah. how far do you think you could place with the Prophecy team that you played with on Saturday? I'd, I'd be content with either or because I know with Ricky and Bose and Clay, if I play Search and Destroy, it's like an easy win. Like I should I should never lose a Search and Destroy with that team. Granted, I, I think in the in the in the 5K we played or in the 2K we played, I don't think we lost a Search and Destroy. I'm pretty sure we did it, even though we didn't have to play very many up until quarterfinals because that's when best of five started. Mm -hmm. I don't think we lost a Search. So, I mean, if as long as I keep my strategies and we keep our S&D, you know, on a, like secret then I don't think anyone will really catch on to what the hell we're doing because I don't plan on streaming very much going at the chance because I know a lot of teams are going to be watching and stuff like that. And I really don't want to give away uh strategy. Is but, it just um, search strategies that you're worried about or is it all game modes? It's all, it's all game modes realistically because Ricky's a very strategic player and he, he, he has his own little ideology of playing. And I know when listening to Ricky he's a very vocal player. So on stream, he, he would probably give away a lot of things that he does and just like the way he, like thinks of playing so right i wouldn't want to jeopardize that in any sort of form when playing with them or even the phase squad so uh i'd be content with either team honestly like they're both really good in a lot of aspects so i'm just waiting to see Wait. uh what happens waiting to see what happens uh one last thing and i then, do want to uh, know with that prophecy team was in the past we saw you getting into it with ricky Pretty good. Uh, pretty pretty big arguments would kind of flare up there. I noticed on Saturday you guys were both listening. It wasn't just one-sided. Uh, no arguments at all. You would let it, all four of each other speak, in fact. And I thought, looking at this team on paper, you have four kind of vocal leaders. You got Ricky, you got Parasite, you got Embos who called some shots on mm -hmm. Optic Nation, and you got Clayster who is definitely willing to put his input in. What was it like playing there on Saturday? And did you guys have that discussion ahead of time to avoid kind of flare-ups or was it just something natural i i think it was something natural because the way i look at it with fears and legal on the team both of them are kind of like new so they won't mouth off or they're not very like hot-headed so they don't really like know what to say or what to do when me and ricky get into it but with clay and bose uh bose is very like a funny guy and he, he he's very good friends with ricky so if ricky started to heat up he would just like mess with them and just like you know pretty much make him shut up and then Realistically, if somebody starts to heat up with Clay in the freaking lobby or Clay there, Clay's just gonna start yelling like a maniac, and everything's gonna yeah, like. I've, 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 I've been on the um, I've been on the receiving end of that. Exactly. So it's like you can't really mouth off on that team, and you it just wouldn't it wouldn't work. Even if I was trying to be like serious, I think everyone would be kind of like cool about it because of the who's who's on the team and right. Yeah. I like it. Well, right now, Prophecy is in number two seed overall. You guys are right behind Optic Gaming. 18 and 8 in the Pro League. Denial and Phase both chasing you. Uh, we know you have a lot of options. We saw two of the diff different options for COD Champs being played out this weekend. Are there more options for you that you would rank either above the team we saw you play with on Saturday there with Prophecy or the Sunday team that you were playing with Phase? Uh, no. Wait, wait, say it. I'm sorry. I just kind of missed like what, no what you asked. Are, do you have do you have more options that could potentially be placed even higher than the oh, Saturday no. roster there of Prophecy or the Sunday roster there of Phase? Oh no, not at all. I don't okay. have any. And then on top of one thing, I want to discuss. Um, you said that I could stay on the Prof team, yada yada, and trade for Clay. See, the thing is, if we trade a player for Clay or get Clay on the roster, and I stayed on that team, that means Clay would replace Fears or Legal as a starting player. And honestly, I don't feel like that's fair to them because one, Prophecy didn't have a league spot up until we joined the team, me, mm -hmm. Legal, Fears, and Ricky, and earned it for them. Right. Also, mm -hmm. they played in 20 summit, somewhat league matches and got us to second place as well. I'm not gonna take credit for that and neither should Ricky or anybody else. Right. So in my opinion, they've earned it and they deserve to play at the season one playoffs. Um, I, I'm not going to take that away from them, and I'm not going to, you know, try to in any sort of way. So I was going to say the solution here, it. Chris, though, is aware is you hear prophecies or sorry, legal and fear saying that they want to play with vexed and perplexed. Both of those players are currently on aware. Um, I don't know what the three way deal would have to be to get I Clay think... to aware and then over to prof. But if you could get legal and fears as a duo, over to aware that could be a cod champs team that plays throughout season one correct me if yes. i'm wrong i think those players that aware would be sending out would be underage 
So I don't know how you would trade those guys for clay. Yeah. That'd be difficult. Exactly. Yeah. I don't so know who, what denial gets out of this, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Like, the, I just... And I also, I just think a lot of, like, the rules need to be changed in the league. I don't think the players have enough say because that's kind of, like... Even if I wanted to leave Prof, I think it's kind of unfair that I played those, all those league matches and I helped earn that spot at Columbus. Mm -hmm. And I can potentially be benched. And it's not even for attitude. It's not even for anything. It's solely because I wanted to join another team. I could be benched for the whole season and not go to season one, even though I helped earn that spot. Wouldn't you qualify that under attitude, though? No, I guess, I guess as, wanna, as someone looking team. outside in, I would be like, well, player's unhappy and wants to join a new team. So, like, as an org, I could potentially think of benching that player. I, I totally see it from your side. I just want to say the flip side for people watching. It's difficult home. to figure I, out. I, I don't think that like. that could be considered under attitude because, um, like, it had nothing to do with. And also, you got to take in, you got to take into account that COD Champs was announced like colliding with season one, which right. kind of mm -hmm. sucks for a lot of people. Oh yeah, I, so, I honestly me, don't I think see all angles of it. I honestly don't think the organization could blame me. And on top of that, I think I left them in a really good position with having a second seed. So they have a lot of incentives to offer, mm -hmm. incentives to offer players trying to be traded. So I don't think I sure. did anything wrong, and I did everything that I could to help that organization and work with them for the time that I tried to work with them. Would, so. you, would you play on a season one team and with a COD Champs team separately? Yeah, I would totally do that. Okay. Yeah. I think that's kind of what everyone will kind of end up doing. I kind of see that's going to be the way. I don't know if it'll be... Yeah, I, think, I, I don't think know if trades one, will be work out. I think season one is going to be a pickup fest. It should be like an easy win for Optic, to be honest. $75,000, yeah. it's all on the line. Feb 20th through the 22nd. Parasite, thank you so much for joining us on the show here. Uh, keep us in the loop, man. I know everyone wants to know where you're going to land. Whatever team picks you up is looking to have some great success at Call of Duty Championships. All right, that's fine. Thank you guys for having me. Cheers, brother. Thanks, have Chris. a great day. You guys can find him. He is uh, streaming as well today. MLG.TV slash Parasite. After the commercial break, though, we're going to be joined by another guest, Clayster is going to be joining Guess on guess on guess. Uh, Clay, he played with Prophecy both yep. Saturday and mm -hmm. Sunday. Currently a member of Denial. If you guys missed it earlier in the show, we announced it is official through MLG. That got approved today. Envy trading JCap and Clayster to Denial in exchange for Zuma and Saints. Yeah, uh, big pickup for Envy. Obviously picking up two of the better players from Denial. And Envy obviously you know, giving Clay and Cap to Denial. But... Clay's been playing extremely well lately. I want to, you know, kind of pick his brain about what he's want to do for champs. All right. Don't go anywhere, guys. Clayster joins the show after this.